Programming Research, the world leader in static analysis solutions, provides the following demonstration which highlights the importance of architectural analysis and the power of Structure 101 for QAC and QAC++. Designed for architects and engineers, Structure 101 identifies unwanted dependencies, complex code repositories, non-reusable and non-modular code through various perspectives, and allows the user to impose constraints on the design to enhance reusability, reliability and maintainability. Structural and complexity metrics can also be measured and monitored. For the purposes of this demonstration, the SimGear open source C++ project has again been used. QAC and QAC++ provide structural information on files, classes, methods and functions, and the dependencies between them, which will be exported. The dependency information is packaged into a Structure 101 project by selecting Reports, Structure 101 Generation on an analysed project from the QAC or QAC++ main GUI. Two files are created in the output directory of the root folder with the project name and a .qac and .qac.hsp extension. The .qac.hsp file is the Structure 101 project file and the .qac file contains all the raw dependency information. Having opened the .qac.hsp file in Structure 101, the overview shows general information on the project, the project's location on disk, and any transforms and exclusions that have been applied. Structure 101 can ignore items that are not of interest. For example, header files from the C colon sigwin user include directory have been included by files in this project. We are not really interested in the structural relationships with these files. Indeed, they may even cloud the view of our code. The location of a force and clue file from QAC++ configuration has also been excluded. Files and folders are normally shown with their full path, which can add unnecessary information to the files. Typically, we are only concerned with the path relative to the root. A transform makes Structure 101 convert paths that match a particular pattern to a specified name. Giving the project a specified starting directory has another advantage. This makes it possible to compare this version of the code with another version of the code without having to worry about the exact paths to files. Structure 101's composition view provides structural analysis by module composition or a slice through the code repository. This view provides a visual display of the rolled up dependencies across complex projects and provides drill down capability to focus on intensely tangled code portions. Compositional diagrams can be used to monitor change impact and provide a common perspective of interlinked code modules. Here we are looking at the dependencies at the folder level. Grey dotted lines represent a dependency and ideally the dependencies should all flow downwards. The red dotted lines show the minimum feedback set, which is the minimum dependencies to remove to make the graph tangle free. Numbers next to the lines show how many dependencies there actually are. The brown box in the center represents 10 items, in this case folders, with interdependencies. All the items in the tangle are linked one way or another. It would be very hard to reuse the code in some of the folders as it is dependent on other folders, which in turn, via other folders, are dependent on the original folder. On the left hand side, Structure 101 shows the hierarchy, and clicking on items allows you to drill down into the code. Under the hierarchy is the notables list, which shows the components with the largest number of tangles, allowing you to go directly to the problem areas. Under this is the graph contents which lists the components in the graph. This is especially useful when the graph is so big only part of it can be shown on the screen. For example, the math folder might contain some useful mathematic functions we wish to use in another project. However, there are four dependencies with the misc folder. 
Clicking on the link, Structure 101 shows us the exact nature of these in the bottom right hand side of the screen. We can see that interpolator.cxx in the math folder includes sgstream.hxx in the miscellaneous folder and calls the sggzifstream class constructor and the isopen member function. The math folder also has another backwards dependency to the props folder. Using the collaboration view, we can trace these dependencies. The detailed collaborations view allows you to trace dependencies through the code. Here we can see the dependency in math traced through the components until it reaches an entity with no dependencies. Structure 101 allows the user to click into dependencies and paddle the screen right and left to explore each level. And as we follow the dependency, Structure 101 for QAC and QAC++ grays out the entities which are not related to the highlighted item. Finally, we have arrived at the end of the dependency chain. The slice perspective shows the code by compositional levels. This can be useful in identifying orphaned or dead code, however here we can see a tangle of eight folders. If we drill right down in the slice selector to the module level, we find that the diagram is so large that it can't be drawn. The dependencies can also be shown in a matrix to assist with this. The graph contents make it easy to find the items of interest. Here is a dependency we looked at earlier. Using the slice perspective, we can see the folder level and how the folders are dependent on each other, including any circular dependencies or tangles. We can drill down into the folders and look at the problems in more detail. For example, looking at clusters showing all the relationships or just viewing a particular tangle. Here at the module level, we can see how all the modules depend on each other and where they are tangled. The slice perspective at the module level can contain too many items to draw. Merging in Structure 101 allows us to define merge rules which combines files according to specified patterns. The slice perspective would show dependencies between C++ source and header files, but if we are looking at the module level, we want to look at classes, not necessarily the files that they are implemented in. As a general rule, we can merge foo.h with foo.cpp to get a view of the complete foo module. This project uses several merge rules as some files are named .cpp, others .cxx, with the headers named either .h or .hxx. Looking at the composition hierarchy for the ephemeris folder, we can see the source and header files appear together as just the source files. This means we can look at the relationships between logical modules. Structure 101 for QAC and QAC++ provides architects and design engineers with the ability to monitor and interrogate dependencies and code structure. However, it takes this further with an environment for creating architectural rules and constraints that trigger warnings on breaches. Structure 101's architectural diagrams can be used to comprehend the code structure or define it, with the option of testing what-if scenarios at a structure level before imposing a particular architecture or making code level changes. At any level, Structure 101 can produce an architectural diagram of the current code structure. This shows the layers of code, not necessarily the intended design, but as the code actually is. This helps bridge the gap between what you want and where you are at at the moment. As a general rule, the diagram is treated as the bricks in a wall, where the upper bricks can depend on lower bricks, but not the other way around. The violations of the architecture are the dependency arrows going up the wall. Manipulating this diagram and building an ideal structure provides the user with the ability to observe architectural violations and impose a structure on the code to prevent it from becoming unreusable, unmaintainable and overly tangled. With the web application, these diagrams can be published so that developers can see what is wrong and what needs to be done 
and gain a shared understanding of the structure of the code. Structure 101's measurement analysis view provides the user with the ability to explore measures representing tangled, interconnected, and overly complex code structures. The XS metric perspective shows components that exceed configurable thresholds for complexity. The complexity is related to each level of the structure, so for a function it is cyclomatic complexity. For higher levels it is the FAT, or the number of edges on the dependency graph. Using this information and the raw metrics from the QAC or QAC++ analysis, developers and architects can reduce code complexity or the FAT of a module, increasing its maintainability, reusability and testability. As we have seen, Structure 101 for QAC and QAC++ provides mechanisms for monitoring and controlling the complexity of code bases, reporting measures representing tangled and interconnected code, and creating and observing architectural constraint violations through the use of diagrams. Structure 101 can also be used to compare and monitor code changes over time via comparing different code versions architectural properties. Discover for yourself how Structure 101 for QAC and QAC++ can improve your software quality. Visit our website